Welcome, everyone. Uh, appreciate you all joining. This is the November 2020 Phoenix and Des Moines Tableau User Group virtual meeting. A uh, little bit of housekeeping before we actually get started. Um, all participants are muted. If you do have any questions for any of our panelists or our presenters, uh, please use the Q&A button located at the bottom. Uh, if you just want to chat, um, provide some feedback to any of us, please use the chat feature. This session will be recorded and it will be made available online on the Tableau YouTube channel. Um, if you don't have that playlist, uh, this desk will include uh, all the links and resources for you to be able to go back and watch uh, any user group, really. So today's agenda, uh, we're gonna go through some announcements and updates, what's going on in the Tableau community. We're gonna do a little bit of Tableau uh, trivia, getting to know you. Uh, let's question where you are at with data literacy. Um, we're gonna have a, a great presentation for you later uh, today on data literacy from Lee Feinberg. We'll take a short break and then we'll come back and we'll uh, hear from Michelle on data literacy and Tableau and just uh, everyday life, how that impacts you uh, in your analytic world. Uh, I'm sure there'll be time for Q&A, feedback, anything else, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. All right, so my name is Michael Perillo. I am a user group leader of the Phoenix Tableau user group. I've been using Tableau now uh, just about a decade. Uh, I've got my certification in uh, Tableau Server, Tableau Desktop, um, pretty much end-to-end. -end. Um, most of my time is spent helping organizations uh, upskill their users into Tableau, uh, do integrations, uh, deployments, training, all that great stuff around this uh, great product. And I'll turn it over to uh, Michelle and Kirk, allow them to introduce themselves. Hi, uh, this is Michelle. Um, I'm from the DSM Tech, one of the two co-leads here. Um, I just uh, earned my very first Tableau certification uh, about a month ago. Um, haven't had time to work on the second one yet, but it'll be coming. Um, I work in uh, mostly marketing analytics, but have a background in other areas as well. And I've been using Tableau for probably about 10 years, started with public. Um, and now I have a fully licensed version and, and try to pass along what I know to people who are just starting out in Tableau or uh, who just wanna trade tips with other people too. So I do a lot of that um, where I work. So. Um, Tableau is probably one of the greatest tools I've ever found uh, for visualization. And I'm glad everybody is popping in and joining today. It looks like it's going to be um, a really good discussion today. Thank you. Kirk. You bet. I'm Kirk Ochendijk. I'm in the Des Moines area as well. Um, I've worked uh, mainly in insurance for the last 20 years. Um, and probably the last 15 years of doing uh, data and analytics before there was a thing called data and analytics. Um, mainly it was in uh, Excel and, and, uh, and such. Then uh, the last five years got into utilizing Tableau. Um, and it was that uh, tool that finally allowed me to do all of those things uh, that the leadership had been asking uh, of the reporting. Um, and uh, really enjoyed uh, utilizing Tableau over the last uh, five years or so. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so as you're aware, uh, we are virtual, and one of the things we do miss uh, is seeing you all in person. Um, but we do wanna make sure that you feel engaged, uh, you're asking questions. So anything comes up, uh, again, please use the either the Q&A panel or the chat feature and uh, one of us will connect with you. We will have some engagement uh, after our announcements. So this will be an opportunity for all of you to interact, uh, for us to get to know you a little bit better, um, and 
figure out how we can provide content going forward uh, that's going to be acceptable to you uh, to, again, upskill, to grow your talent, to network with others uh, in this space. Um, so in a moment or two, um, I'll have Michelle put in a link into the chat, uh, which you'll, again, you'll utilize to access our online polling and uh, engagement tool. All right, so let's go through some announcements. Um, if any of you are brand new to Tableau or you have uh, young ones uh, in the household, uh, this is a great program that Tableau's put out, Data Kids. Um, it is a program that allows mostly young ones, uh, you know, ages, uh, I'd say, uh, element, late elementary to middle school age, to get acclimated to data analytics and visual analytics. Um, again, this doesn't necessarily have to be for kids. If you are brand new to Tableau uh, and data analytics and visual analytics, this is also a great place to start and just get accustomed to understanding data. So today's whole uh, program, what we're going to be talking about is data literacy. This is a great place for you to introduce those kind of concepts, uh, again, whether it's to yourself or your kids, um, and get them engaged in this space. For those of you that are looking to upskill or learn more about the, the product, uh, Tableau itself, or in general, just data analytics or visual analytics, uh, Tableau eLearning is available for you. Um, up until uh, December 7th, you can take 20% off of this subscription pricing. So uh, use the code LEARN, TC2020. Uh, go out to the eLearning uh, website, elearning.tableau.com. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive, roughly $10 or so a month uh, retail. Uh, again, you'll get 20% off of that whole uh, annual subscription price. So. This is a great way for, again, you to learn more about Tableau, uh, data analytics, um, data scientists, being a community leader, uh, executive sponsor, all of that great stuff. You can see kind of the roles that are also included there. So take advantage of this. Certification. Uh, we're going to inquire a little bit later today uh, through the polling, you know, where people are at with their certification. But... Uh, part of what we really promote is to get certified. Um, if certification is just not your thing, still go out, uh, visit the certification website. Uh, they've got study guides. This is also a great blueprint for you to learn how to use uh, the product end-to-end. Uh, -end. It gives you that roadmap, uh, if you will. If you are interested in certifying uh, there are five levels of certification, uh, three in desktop and two in server. Uh, you can get 20% off of those certification pricing up until December 7th. Uh, the great thing about these certifications is you can buy them now and you have up until six months to schedule that exam. So if this is something that you might be doing for your organization, for um, trying to upskill or just meeting one of those annual goals, uh, this is a great opportunity. Again, get this now, uh, you know, save some cash and take the exam whenever you're ready within that six month period. Upcoming events, uh, just make sure you uh, have this link bookmarked, tableau.com slash community slash events. Lots of events going on all the time, whether they're on demand webinars, live webinars, user group meetings such as this, uh, there's something going on all the time. And again, we do appreciate you taking out the time of your day to spend it with us. Much appreciated. If you're brand new to Tableau or you haven't been into the community in a while, uh, there is a brand new community look and feel. Uh, this platform is built on the Salesforce platform. Uh, as if you're not aware, Salesforce now, uh, Tableau is a part of the Salesforce family. So we're, we're all basically integrated into there. A lot of great uh, content uh, that's come over from the original platform and new content. Uh, get inspired, get answers, get connected. 
uh, go out to community.tableau.com, sign up. Uh, this is free. The Tableau Fringe Festival. Um, if you haven't seen what this Fringe Festival is all about, please take a moment um, and visit the website, uh, thefringefestival.rocks. This is uh, an event that has been going on for, uh, it's been about monthly or so, and now uh, kind of wrapping up for the year. But uh, this is Tableau community uh, experts, if you will, all around the globe, uh, providing presentations and demos and tips and tricks and just anything you can think of um, in this one event. Um, usually it goes pretty much all around the clock and it's one event or one presentation right after the other. Uh, all these are recorded, they are all online, so if you visit the website you can look at past events, uh, look at some great content, maybe get some ideas for introducing to your organization or finding a, a solution to a problem that maybe you have. All right, for Phoenix, uh, this was meant to be our final uh, meeting for the year, uh, but we will be meeting one more time, uh, December 10th. We'll be doing a team up with the San Diego Tableau user group. Uh, Michelle, I, I think though this uh, wraps it up for the year for Des Moines, is that correct? Yeah, uh, this is our last meeting for this year. Um, we'll probably meet uh, late February or early March will be our next meeting. And if people are interested in uh, providing feedback for you um, and Kirk to promote uh, new kind of content or ideas or they, they wish to present, what's the best way to get in touch? Um, the best way to get in touch is um, probably through LinkedIn. Uh, we do have a, a Gmail uh, email account. It's uh, dsmtug at gmail.com. Um, so they can also reach out through there. Perfect. In the slide deck too, we do have uh, contact information for the LinkedIn group, the Twitter, uh, and the email. So uh, if you didn't get all that written down, I'm sure Michelle will share that in the chat, but fear not. Uh, it's in the slide deck and everyone will get a copy. All right, the Tableau Mentorship Program. Uh, if you are, again, brand new to Tableau or you're looking to upskill in a particular area, uh, really encourage you to join this uh, mentorship program. Uh, if you're someone that would like to give back and mentor a mentee, this is also a program for you. Uh, please visit mentoringmeetup.com. Uh, there's some forms uh, for you to fill out. It is free. Um, the individuals shown on the screen there will help organize and match you with uh, the right mentor or mentee. And from there, uh, you'll go on your way. Whether you want to learn more about data science, visual analytics, data storytelling, data literacy, uh, data dev, whatever it might be, there's an opportunity for you to be uh, a mentor or a mentee. Uh, this Tableau Talent Finder, if you've been affected by COVID or you know someone has, has and you're looking for a work or you're an employer that's looking for talent, uh, do visit the Tableau Talent Finder. Again, there's a great form uh, for you to fill out and the users that have developed this in the community will help uh, coordinate matches and possible uh, opportunities for those, again, either looking for work or looking for talent. So again, Tableau Talent Finder. One of the ways that the Phoenix Tableau user group stays engaged is we've got our uh, internal Slack channel. Um, if you're not familiar with Slack, no worries. There's a link, again, when the slide deck's provided, give you more information. It's just a great collaboration tool, um, chat, sharing files, uh, networking. This doesn't replace the Tableau forums, uh, but it's a great way to kind of stay engaged. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, we'll get some information out to you. If any of you are uh, students or you know students, uh, Tableau uh, is available for them um, at no cost. 
uh, you can go out to tableau.com slash academics, read the information there, sign up, and uh, if approved, uh, students will get a fully functional version of Tableau Desktop, uh, Tableau Prep at no cost. Why we're saying this, uh, Tableau Conference virtual-ish uh, has wrapped up this year. And with that, one of the main uh, highlights is the Iron Viz contest. Uh, there is now a student Iron Viz contest that's going to be uh, wrapping up or being held in December 20th. Uh, students, again, are encouraged to sign up. Um, there's some data out there, we encourage some visualization. The, the Phoenix Tableau user group is looking to do a workshop in the next couple of weeks on a weekend for any students that are interested in participating in the Iron Viz to better understand how to construct your data, how to construct the visualization. Tell that great story. Uh, our recent winner of the Iron Viz contest, Christian Felix, uh, user group leader over in Tucson has won that. You can see a little example of uh, his winning viz. So this is something we want to encourage uh, with the students uh, out there. As I mentioned, uh, Tableau Conference-ish uh, just kind of wrapped up. Um, if you missed out or you're interested in seeing some of those presentations, you can do so on demand. Uh, just take note of that link, uh, tc20.tableau.com. Uh, you will need to register, but once you're registered, you'll be able to go back and watch uh, hundreds of presentations on demand, keynotes, data dev, uh, topics, a lot of great content out there. All right, let's move through some of this quickly because we already talked about the education and certification. Again, today's really about data literacy for all. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this later, but uh, Tableau does offer a free e-learning uh, program for you to upskill, uh, learn more about data literacy, and you can do that at tableau.com slash learn slash data dash literacy, and we'll put that link into the chat uh, shortly. What we're going to do now is get to know you. Um, have some fun, do some a little bit of trivia. So what I'd like for you all to do uh, is go to the website, uh, Michelle or Kirk, if you can put that link into the chat, that'd be great. Um, if you'd like to use your mobile device, you can scan the QR code. Um, that'll take you to the menti.com website. Use code 63339986. Once you get logged in, uh, give yourself a friendly G-rated name, and we'll get started momentarily. All right, looks like we started getting some people. Uh, just a confirmation, everybody can see now my screen, uh, getting to know you. Again, uh, go out to menti.com and use the code 6333986. Looks like we got a number of people joining, so we'll give it another 30 seconds or so, and then we'll we'll get started. And this works just as well on desktop and mobile device. Again, menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use code 63339986. All right. If you want to join um, after, uh, go ahead. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to get to know a little bit more about you. Um, so we want to know uh, what city, state are you joining us from today? All right.
looks like we got a lot of Arizona, we got Germany. Indiana, Iowa, Denver. All right. Give it another five seconds or so, and then we'll go to the next question. Looks great. We're all spread out. Again, thanks for all joining. So is this your first time at a Tableau user group? All right, looks like we have some. This is your first time attending, so thank you. Uh, definitely interested in hearing more about how you heard about the Tableau user groups. Um, if you wanna throw that into the chat, uh, love to hear that. For those of you that attended some, um, again, we understand that with everyone virtual now, there's so many to choose from, but we do appreciate you engaging with the Phoenix and Des Moines Tableau user group. And for those of you that are regular attendees, welcome back. Thank you. Much appreciated. All right. How long have you been using Tableau? All right. Well, for those of you that have been using it less than a year, again, there's going to be some great content that's going to be shared today. Hopefully, uh, you'll fall in love more so with the product and data literacy, data visualization. Um, keep moving forward. Again, we're all about certification and education and networking. A lot of great stuff. All right. Looks like we're pretty well balanced here. How many of you have certifications, and if so, which ones? Now, for those of you that do not have any certifications, uh, we hope that, again, uh, you're inspired to at least uh, go for one or two of them. The certification page, again, does give you a study guide. Um, again, it's a great roadmap. If you are not interested in certifying whatsoever, please do utilize it as a, a roadmap for scaling up and learning the product uh, so you don't miss any of those gaps. And then for those of you that are certified, congratulations. Um, definitely want you to keep moving forward and uh, attain more. Good stuff. Now, as we go through and do our virtual meetings, we want to understand which products appeal to you, uh, I don't want to say most, but we want to make sure that we're not necessarily always focusing on just Tableau desktop alone. So which products of Tableau's interest you? Um, and if you didn't know that there's quite a bit, um, there is quite a bit. Tableau Public was mentioned earlier. That's Tableau's free version. Um, gives you that personal public space that allows you to play with that. Tableau Prep Builder is your data preparation uh, tool that comes with Tableau Desktop, provided you have that creator license. Tableau Server, Tableau Online, those are also great uh, server-facing tools um, that are also, you don't have to necessarily be a server admin uh, or site admin to, to leverage those. So, got a lot of good stuff. No Salesforce people out there. A lot of great uh, components uh, of Salesforce coming to Tableau, so definitely want you to be aware of those. All right, how familiar are you with data literacy? And be honest, we want to make sure that again, we're providing you uh, great content uh, that's going to help demystify what data literacy is and how you can promote that uh, within your organizations. All right, looks like we're pretty 
well spread out. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with data literacy or just starting out, we hope that you enjoy today's content presentations. And for those of you that are experts, go ahead and uh, hit us up in the chat because we might want you to present one day. All right. Now, does your organization actually promote data literacy? And I think this is one of the things that uh, we'll definitely cover today is how do we get this uh, promoted within our organization or how can you maybe take that initial step uh, to doing just that. So looks like, again, we're, we're pretty well spread out. Uh, for those of you that don't know or you don't do that, again, hopefully some of the content today will help give you an idea of how you can get that engagement started. All right, are you currently using any of the Tableau's free e-learning offerings or specifically the data literacy for all? And for those of you that are, are indicating no, uh, we hope that you jump into that I plan to after today's presentation, learning more about it. Again, Tableau does offer a free uh, foundational uh, training on demand for you to learn really the basics of data literacy. And we're gonna share all that information with you today. All right, good stuff. All right, the way that trivia works is uh, you answer correctly the fastest and you accumulate more points. Uh, do not let that sway you from actually trying to uh, get the right answer. So we're gonna get started in a few seconds here. Get ready. All right, we've got five questions total. Hopefully this goes pretty quick. First question, simply stated, what is data literacy? All right, fantastic. Yes, data literacy simply is the ability to explore, understand, and communicate with data. Next question. Which are good data literacy traits? And this is multiple selection. All three are actually correct. So for those of you that selected all three, congratulations. Curiosity, analytic competency, exploration, there's many, many of them. Um, these are just a few. All right, next one. Which best describes a qualitative Great, yes, qualitative and the other answer, the incorrect answer was more on the quantitative state. Good job, everyone. All right, next question. Choose the best option describing continuous variables. So within Tableau specifically, there's also these continuous and discrete variables. Which one describes continuous? All right. 
I'm getting the hang of this. Yes, continuous are the variables that are unbroken whole without interruption. And last question. Which scenario best fits a discrete variable? Number of students in a class is a discrete variable, correct. All right, let's find out who our winner winners are. All right, congratulations, RG. Well done. Uh, RG, if you want to throw your contact information uh, into the chat, uh, you can either message myself or uh, any one of the panelists. Uh, we'll get you out some swag. So congratulations. All right, hopefully uh, you found that somewhat engaging, a little bit of fun. Uh, again, that was just a small portion of what data literacy covers. The Tableau's uh, data literacy for all program, I think is roughly around five or six hours of content. Uh, and goes over things that you need to know for that foundational skill level um, pretty much in detail. So do take uh, advantage of that. I'm going to just flip over here real quick before we move on to the next presentation. Uh, elearning.com or elearning.tableau.com slash data literacy. That'll uh, take you over here. This is what that page looks like. Again, this is free. This is not going to cost you anything to do. Um, there's some great uh, topics in here that cover your introductory introduction to data literacy, recognizing data, the structure, uh, variables and field types, aggregation and granularity, distributions, variation, uh, comparisons, um, and understanding correlation, regression, and relationships. Um, again, these are the foundational elements of data literacy. Uh, for you to be able to understand your data, to be able to communicate that data, and then visualize that data. Um, this isn't necessarily just for the developers. These are also for the consumers to better understand what kind of questions to ask for. And we're going to get into all that through our presentations today. All right. So let's uh, see. Lee, do we have Lee on the line yet? I'm here. All right, welcome, Lee. So let me uh, flip over back here, um, give you the introduction. Uh, and again, the, the title of this may, may change, but I uh, do want to introduce Lee Feinberg. He's the president and founder of Decision Viz. Uh, Lee is also a former Tableau user group leader uh, in the New York, New Jersey area, uh, former uh, Tableau ambassador as well. So we're excited and thrilled to have you uh, present today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lee. Okay, great. Uh, let's, let's see if I can get this screen sharing to work. Uh, not sure what's going to happen here. Here we go. Let's see. So thanks, Michael, and uh, everybody for having me out here. I'm going to go into a little bit of my New York speaking mode because I have a hard stop at 2.59. So we've got 25 minutes or so, and uh, pl please feel free to, to put some things into Q&A as, as you go along here. I, I definitely want to leave enough time for that. And my, my goal here is to to get you thinking maybe a little bit differently about what data literacy, not necessarily what it is, but what it could be and, and how it will potentially begin to take shape in your organizations. And I know everybody has a bit of a different definition. I know in your, your quiz, there were 
two two question two answers to what data literacy could be, but I find it's actually much more complicated than that. So I wanted to give you how I think about it, and I don't think there is a right or a wrong. I think it's but what I do think is important is to know what people mean when they say it, because it's become a bit of a catch-all and a bit of a buzzword. When I talk about data literacy, I think about writing and reading with data. So it's kind of a, a companion to literacy like we think with writing or speaking a language, because I think this is a visual language. There are some groups that think data literacy is more about the actual working with the data side. How do you get it in? How do you understand the shape of your data, you know, uh, looking for correctness of the data, things like that. I think that's fine too. That's just not what I focus on. So just wanted to level set there. And by the way, if there's, um, hopefully Michelle and Michael, you're kind of taking a look at the Q&A. If you think there's something in there that's worthwhile just stopping me and jumping in, feel free to do that. Um, my goal isn't, I don't have a presentation here where I'm trying to get to the finish line. I'm more interested in, in sharing ideas. So I think if you guys could just imagine a couple of things for a minute, I wanna paint a couple of uh, scenarios. So the first scenario is you are given Microsoft Word and you are trained in everything about Microsoft Word. You are an expert in Microsoft Word but nobody actually teaches you, let's just say English. So you, you know how to use Microsoft Word, but you have no idea how to apply language to take advantage of that. So keep that in mind. The second situation is on Monday, you come in to work and your CFO, your chief financial officer has written an email to everybody in the company. And it says something like, I've been thinking about things like balance sheets and income statements for a long time. And I've decided that we don't need to use those anymore because we're all very smart over here in finance. And I think if everybody can just wants to do whatever they want, I think it'll all work out pretty fine. Now, usually when I'm doing this with the audience, I get some funny looks and people kind of say, yeah, that's probably not a really good idea. And, and why is that? But these are the kinds of things that we face as practitioners using Tableau or any other application. Because even if you use Tableau, you probably use PowerPoint or Excel or maybe even something that's more comparable to Tableau. And they give us the application and we might get a lot of training on all the features and functions and that's where it ends. And that's a real problem. So what's the, what do we see happening there? Well, that's why we have visualizations that people create, dashboards they create that, that aren't very good. Um, maybe they don't look good, but maybe they don't behave well. Maybe uh, they're hard to interpret because people don't understand the language of visualization, not the technology of it, but actual language, how it's perceived, how people process it, things like that. Uh, Maybe everybody in the organization, once they have Tableau, everybody just does whatever they want. They're given the software and they use it however they see fit. There's no consistency on the process of how do you go from an idea of a project to the output of the project. Everybody just kind of does their own thing. Maybe within a small team, there is some consistency, but when you go across a larger organization, maybe every team is using a different approach. Well, if you really want to scale data literacy and have a data literate organization, a data literate company, you have to organize this in a way that gets away from these pockets, gets away from people just doing what they think is right and actually educate them and train them on, on some consistent ways to go about doing their work. Just like every other strategic organization does in a company, finance has business, um, balance sheets and income statements. Marketing has the four Ps. IT has ways to code and test in a consistent way. And you could name every other strategic function except what we do tends to be a little bit more like do it however you want. So what my company has created 
and I'm, I'm just want to tell you the name. I'm not here to pitch anything in any way, just sharing ideas. We created a solution to uh, deal with these things. We call it design to act. And it's a way of thinking. It's a way of working that you teach an organization so that they can scale up and become data literate in a consistent way. And so that the organization knows how to work better together. It also elevates the idea of data visualization to being more strategic. A lot of companies look at it as an activity. Oh, you need to make some charts. You need to make some dashboards. And we have to educate other people that it's way more than that. It has a much more important function and role in how things get done than just the output that you see from something like a Tableau. And so I wanna talk about three ideas that are part of the whole solution. And we call these the data literacy accelerators. And the first one is about a different way of approaching the problem, thinking about it not as a project, but as a product that you're creating for your customers or your end users. The second part is not focusing so much on the data, but focusing on the outcomes of what the data helps you achieve, which is making decisions and taking action. And the third is a whole new phase, which we call uh, go to market, which is the idea that when your company makes a product, you don't just finish the product, you do things to let people know about it. You track it, you uh, make sure that it's doing its job. And so we wanna talk about that a little bit as well. So I have a question for you. It's not going into the, the survey. I just want you to think about this. And if you could imagine that you were able to sell your dashboards on something like Amazon, or even set up your own thing, maybe on Shopify, do you think people would pay for it? And I ask this because if you, if you shift to thinking about your work as a product, you might behave very differently. And in fact, that's the cornerstone of, of this idea of design to act that we're going to treat it as a product because right now, most of it is thought of from a project standpoint. Someone says, I want X and we start working on it and at some point we go through a process of building it and testing it and getting the data and all that stuff. And then it, it gets kind of released out into our customer base. But I'd like you to think about it in this way as a product because uh, now you can start to imagine different ways that you might actually go about doing the work. Could it be taking ideas from how IT does their development? Uh, or how um, more uh, companies that are out there, startups, and how they do their product development. How do they get to market faster? How do they move forward in ways where it's not a perfect world? We're used to thinking about, oh, we need all the data to be perfect. We need all the requirements to be perfect. And then I can start. It's not really practical anymore. So how do we borrow from what those kinds of organizations are doing and apply it to our work. So that's a, that's a, a key thing to consider uh, for yourself. Uh, think about this idea of a movie in terms of thinking about things in terms of an, an agile world and maybe how things are done today. Uh, if you were Steven Spielberg and someone handed you a script you wouldn't start shooting the movie right away. You would do all kinds of other planning. You would lay out what it's going to be like. You would rearrange things. You would maybe do focus groups. You wouldn't do any shooting of the movie for quite some time. What we tend to do is someone comes to us and says, I need A, B, and C, and then we just jump right into the software and start doing it. Then we get into this very vicious cycle of, we show it to them and they say, that's not really what I wanted. I wanted this and we go back and forth and there's a lot of that and we're all agonizing over it and it actually ends up taking longer. So if you think about, again, these ideas that are out there about how people do produce work, 
we can learn a lot and a lot of those ideas will apply to us. So that's all I'm gonna say about the idea of thinking of this as a product until we get to the last stage. I know I'm going real fast here. I'm just getting a few ideas out. The, the next thing I want you to think about is how you feel and how maybe your customers feel about how they actually use the data, the data visualizations and the reports that you may be producing or your organizations may be producing. A lot of it is like this. You get a page and it has many filters on it or many ways to interact with the data. And it's done that way so the user can do whatever they want. And what that really means is it ends up being very difficult to use. And it's like looking for a needle in a haystack or looking for an insight in a haystack. You have to click uh, an untold number of combinations potentially of those filters or, or other options to find something that maybe looks like an insight. And that's very painful. And this is something that leads to having low engagement, having low adoption because people are frustrated. Uh, they're not really getting what they want. And, the, and if they can, the level of effort is very high. And so that is what we find has been caused by a focus on data. And I'd like to completely flip that idea on you right now and say that data is not the star of our, of our stories, of our movie anymore. And that sounds strange because we're kind of talking about data literacy and data visualization and data as a whole. But in reality, it's what the data enables that are the, should be the stars. And those are two simple things, making decisions and taking action. Those are the things that we want to focus on. And the data then becomes the support. It's the supporting actor in our story, right? Because if we understand very clearly what we're trying to do, what the outcome is of this work and why we're even doing it, we're not doing it because someone asked us to. They have a goal and we have to know what that is. We have to uncover it. And when we do, then we can find out what data is necessary to help us actually create that story. One of the problems you can run into is if you just rely on the data that you have at your fingertips, you aren't thinking about other possibilities maybe. And sometimes you don't run into those problems until you're way down the line and someone says, well, what about X? And now you're so far into the project, you don't wanna stop, but now you're missing something that could have been important because you didn't think about it from the beginning. So this is a whole art and there's a whole, a whole uh, kind of recipe of, of what we've figured out on how to do this and how to extract this information and it's not saying, well, what question do you want to answer? I mean, that can be part of it. But again, just answering the question doesn't bring that person's thinking up, that cut your customer's thinking up to that level of what am I really going to do? When I get this from Lee, what are my intentions? What, what decisions do I, wanna, do I want to take? What would cause me to even think about doing something, right? And then how do I actually get to the point of having the right information to get closer to knowing what action I should take. It's a it's a 180 degrees different from how we approach the problem today. And once you think about it in this different manner, when you focus on actually building your visuals, because you're coming at it from a different angle of the decisions and the actions rather than the data, usually what you create is very different as well. Uh, so you get a very stark uh, uh, dynamic between, hey, if I approach it from the data side or I approach it from the decisions and action side, my output is usually quite different. So again, very, very quick ideas. Just want to get you thinking about this notion of decisions and actions. So, so let me take it a little further now. And you've actually completed your work. You have done your your dashboard, 
it has been tested, it's good to go. You publish it to Tableau Online, Tableau Server, and you send out the link to your team and they get it and you go, great job, everybody. Kind of pat, well, normally maybe you pat each other on the back, have a little celebration and you move on to your next project. Well, this is actually where in, our, in, in the world that we live in, that, that with our customers, the hard work actually starts. I know that sounds maybe uh, not giving enough credit to all the hard work that went into getting there, but actually that, that is what we find. So when your company develops a product, you don't just say we're done. You have all kinds of things you have to do besides distribute it. You have you market it, you advertise, you have education, you have support in place. There's a whole model that you probably are very familiar with, again, that we can take and you can figure out how to apply it to this type of work. So we call that activation. And so there's many forms that that comes with. So maybe we'll just talk about one simple one which is this idea of kind of um, marketing or we call it the demo. And if you follow, and we see this all the time, you can follow all the best practices about visualization and read through every document that Tableau has and look at Viz of the Day and Makeover Monday, et cetera, which are all fantastic resources. So you can use all those and still create a a product that people don't necessarily know how to use. And that's because of many potential reasons. Maybe it's the first time they're seeing something like this, uh, or maybe they're not familiar with the particular visuals you used, or maybe it's new data, or maybe it's a new type of analysis. There's all kinds of reasons that maybe it's not as easy for them to use. So we create a demo. And we have a very specific way of, of doing the demo. And when I say demo, I mean more than one. All that really means is a, a, a video that you create for different scenarios of how the analysis is actually done so that you give your users very concrete examples of how to use it. So don't assume that it's so great that of course it's super intuitive and they'll absolutely know how to use it. That's, that's a dangerous uh, way to think about it. Again, no matter how much care you've taken, uh, assuming that everybody's going to know how to use it and get the most out of it is, is a bad idea. So uh, without, get, obviously we're not gonna cover all the details of how to, how to do the demo in this particular way, but think about this for yourselves. If you were to create two, three, five different little videos, just a couple minutes long and post them up to your intranet or your homepage or provide a link to the videos even from a help section on your dashboard. Just some way that people knew they had access to it whenever they wanted uh, because you wanna have that consistent um, support for them uh, to, to go back and reference it. Cause even if they just see it once they might wanna go back more and more. And these are, so this is a great way to boost your adoption uh, by giving, by basically enabling people to use it and teaching them how to do it in a way that uh, gets to the analysis. It's not like click, 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 right? It's not the functional aspect. It's how do you actually get to finding an insight uh, through this piece of work? So I'm gonna stop. We got about six, seven minutes to answer a couple questions. Uh, I know we covered a lot of ground pretty quickly. So Michelle, Michael, I don't know if you've got some stuff coming in the Q&A that you want to throw at me. Yeah, if you have any questions about uh, this concept or data literacy in general, go ahead and uh, post that in the Q&A panel and we'll relay that to Lee. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, just an observation, Lee, you know, when you mentioned, you know, would you pay for your you know, the dashboards or, you know, the, the artifacts that we end up creating, you know, I think most times, more times than not, you know, it, it's usually no, you know, for one reason or another, but, you know, a lot of great information um, and lessons really to kind of own that as a, a product and really mature it and put some thought into it. Yeah, the, the, 
The biggest thing that I would, I'd, I'd love for people to take away, because I know we, we hit on a few different points, is to think about their work at a higher level. Think about this strategically and that it should fit strategically in the organization. And also that there really is a structure that they should create for doing the work uh, rather than people just thinking about it as, yeah, you're the person that makes charts, right? It's way more than that. And I think that that's, not, that's a fault of history probably more than anything else. And we're in a new world now. We're not in the BI world of tw even five years ago, let alone 30 years ago, right? Where it was, you know, some people just are cranking these things out from some unknown area of the company and they show up, right? It's, a, it's completely different. But there are so many, uh, you know, I'll say stigmas that are ingrained in the way the company operates around data and the way people think about it, that we're the ones, we're, we're the ones who are going to have to break that if we want to get to uh, other levels of thinking, have access to more senior positions, you know, get deeper into the company, you know, just at a personal level, have a greater career. Uh, we're going to have to elevate ourselves in a different way than just you know, maybe, maybe how a lot of people perceive it these days. Yeah, all that sounds good. And I'll, I'll send you some links. Uh, there's a couple things that I've started that are all free resources. I, uh, not this week or next week, but pretty weekly, I, I have a, an interview series with someone from the industry and we get into some of these kinds of questions on how they're dealing with these situations. So it's very, you can take away some very practical steps about how other people are tackling these problems. And I also have a couple, another video series and an uh, ebook that uh, address some of these issues as well that are kind of starting points that I'm happy to share with you. And again, they're all free resources and stuff. So. Uh, happy for you guys to have them and be able to share them with your teams. Yeah, that would be great. We'll uh, include Lee's information uh, along with his website uh, in the deck and share that with uh, the group. So if there's no questions, you can always follow up with Lee or post a question. Uh, he's uh, online, social media, email, his website, uh, a lot of ways to connect with Lee. So um, definitely wealth of information, knowledge. Um, so yeah, please, please use uh, Lee as a resource, uh, especially around data literacy. A lot of, a lot of great stuff. Thanks for uh, letting me jump in with you guys. And I, I'm sorry, I got to jump out, but uh, have a great rest of your session. And I hope everybody has a good holiday as well. Thanks, Lee. Take care. Right. So long. Bye. All right. So hopefully you're starting to learn a little bit more about data literacy. Again, it's uh, not necessarily always straightforward, and that's why we're we're really kind of pushing uh, these foundational offerings that Tableau provides. Uh, we put that into the chat. You can sign up for free. Lee gave uh, a lot of great uh, tips and information. Uh, what we're going to do now is take a 10-minute break. Uh, we'll come back about 10 minutes. Um, after the hour. And then uh, Michelle's going to dive into uh, a lot about what we've talked about with the data literacy for all, um, some initiatives around data literacy, and uh, just how it uh, behaves in uh, everyday life. So circle back with us in about 10 minutes, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Welcome back. Uh, again, we're, we're going to get ready. We're going to continue on data literacy. Uh, Michelle, are you are you back with us? Yes, I am. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop sharing. Uh, you can share. Michelle's our uh, Des Moines, uh, one of our Des Moines Tableau uh, user group leaders. So for those of you that are joining us from Des Moines, welcome. Um, and as she said before, if there's uh, some things that you'd like to see uh, coming up in 2021, uh, got some uh, links uh, that we'll share. Uh, for you to get in touch with Michelle and the uh, Des Moines Tableau user group. 
All righty. Okay, well, let's get started here. Um, I'm going to dive into some of the data literacy for all um, Tableau's initiative um, for data skills. Um, and it is, it is free to everyone to go in there. You may have to register once you get into e-learning, um, but it is uh, free for everyone to use. Um, it's not, um, the lessons are fairly easy to digest in about an hour or less. So as you go through, it's not uh, something that you're going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on uh, unless you want to. Um, they're very easily digestible lessons to go through. Um, so it's, it's very accessible and easy for everyone to get through. Um, the reason that they're doing this is um, they want data literacy for all is just designed to help everyone learn those fundamental data skills. And the reasoning behind that is um, Tableau believes in diversity and diversity doesn't just apply to ethnicity or how you identify yourself as what gender you identify as. It's beyond that the diversity within the Tableau users crosses all educational backgrounds, um, all experiences uh, with data. Some people coming in uh, to positions and uh, being told, oh, hey, by the way, here's Tableau, figure out how to use it. And uh, sometimes people have not really had much experience beyond Excel as far as how to um, not only interact with the data that they have, but bring it into a meaningful visualization so decisions can be made. So uh, data literacy for all is just designed to really get at the core of what you need to know um, as you start to get into the data, as you start to visualize the data and you start to tell those data stories. To break it down a little bit, um, I was thinking about um, watching toddlers and young children learn to read and I'm old enough now, I can't remember when I learned to, learn to read, but I do remember when I learned to read Spanish because I did that in college. And I remember how difficult it was learning a whole other language and a whole other set of conjugations and a whole other set of how do we string all these words together to make a meaningful sentence? And how do I string them together and then make a story and a composition once I got through fourth year? Um, so it's, it's the same approach with data. When you first start with data, it's just a, a bunch of numbers. It's that haystack that Lee was showing us. And it's confusing a lot of times if you're not used to seeing it right away. Good news is over time, you learn to see through that haystack and it's not just a pile of numbers anymore. It gets a little more organized as you're used to seeing those patterns and those grids. And then you start building your first bar charts. And then you take those bar charts and line charts and you start to build them into a dashboard and that's when you start beginning your journey into telling that data story. And it can be a long journey and it's, and it's not easy, it's not meant to be easy, um, but it does move you forward. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Ah. <laughs> so as we look at all the different educational backgrounds and I've uh, literally met people at Tableau Conference who are coming from, you know, who majored in history and English and there's engineers and there's uh, people who are now majoring in data science because there are, there are those majors now. Uh, there are people like me who come from the field of psychology and sociology. Um, lots of educators out there. We're coming from everywhere with all of our different data experiences. Um, and so many different backgrounds uh, career-wise too where people are coming from. We have people from nonprofits we have people from around the globe doing different things all coming together. And the one common thing we have is learning the, is the data literacy that we have all learned over time. Some are newbies, some are very seasoned. But when you put a well-built visualization in front of someone, it doesn't matter what language you speak, you can look at that visualization, visualization and you can see the stories coming out of the data. And it's really powerful when you go to a conference and you're surrounded by people from around the globe and you're looking at the Viz gallery or you're um, sitting in a session and someone brings up um, 
of this that they've built that's, oh, I'm trying to pick it. I was going to go with COVID because it's at the top of everybody's mind. But when someone brings up a visualization of something that's important, um, such as health data, education data, GDP data from around the globe, um, everybody can understand that when they look at those visualizations, if they are done well. They bring it up. It's a universal language to, to see those dashboards and understand what's in them. And we see that most um, when you look in Tableau Public and you can see all the different visualizations that are out there. It doesn't matter what part of the world they're from. It doesn't matter what language they're written in as far as, well, sometimes a little bit for the filters, but you can look at the visualization and understand what it's about based on what's in it if it's well built. If it's not well built, it's a little tougher and that's where the literacy comes in. Being able to know what charts to put together, whether you need a map graphic, whether you need a line chart, what's the best way to visualize your continuous data if you have a date and you want to show a longitudinal thing, or maybe you just have a lot of categories that are interrelated and you want to understand that as well. But it's not only understanding the data structures, there's a lot of basic data concepts that you need to understand. And some of these popped up in uh, the Menti um, uh, game that we played at the very beginning. Um, you have to know your different variables. What are variables? What are your different field types? Um, data aggregation versus data granularity. You want to aggregate your data or you want to bring it so you can see smaller levels of detail in it. All of that's important to data literacy and how you read the data and how you display the data in a data viz. Um, once you get past that point, then you can start to think about basic statistical concepts. Um, one of the things that was talked about at uh, the last Tableau conference-ish conference um, was Einstein analytics coming into Tableau. And that's gonna bring a lot of power on the analytical side uh, for Tableau. Currently, you can bring in, um, if you're using R or Python or MATLAB, there's a way to connect that and bring that analysis into Tableau, which brings a lot of higher level analysis into Tableau. And one of the things that is very difficult sometimes for the general public or even uh, people who are new to data viz is understanding not only how to display that higher level analysis, but to interpret it so it's easy for everyone to understand. Um, and we're talking about things like data distributions, think COVID with this bell curve and flattening the curve that we've all been hearing about. Um, you know, the variation that you can see in the different comparisons, making wise comparisons with different data types. And then it gets into correlation, which can be a tricky, tricky thing to work with, and regression, which even is more tricky if you don't know how to use it. Um, once you get a handle of all, on all these things, in the end, you're going to be able to visualize your data better and tell much, much more rich data stories. And that's what it's all about. Tableau is telling better stories with data. Um, it seems like every time I see a new viz of the day, um, I'll be like, oh man, this is a great viz. It can't get any better than this. And then I see the next one and I say the same thing every time. Oh, it can't get any better than this. And then I see the next one. Um, there was a viz posted um, earlier this week and I can't remember who the author is. Michael, if you know, pop in if you know off the top of your head. But when I first saw it come up with the Twitter feed, I thought it was a photograph of the God's Eye Nebula. It wasn't, it was a viz with multiple radials inside of each other, but it, I'm telling you, the first thing I thought of was God's Eye Nebula when I saw it, and it was just beautiful. Um, so those, those things pop up and, and, and roll by, and they all are telling a different story. But when you get into Tableau Public, you see the personal side of these data stories. And anybody who's done a TED talk will tell you, TED is not about what's being presented. It's not about the subject. It's about the personal relationship between the speaker and the subject. 
and our data approach to our data viz can also be that way. And once you understand the fundamentals of data list literacy, part of that is knowing your subject matter. When you do a makeover Monday, they're supporting documents that are posted with your data set so you can get a better frame for that data and what that data is about, what the meaningful things are you need to think about as you are working with that data set and preparing your own visualization. Um, sometimes the data sets are fairly narrow and there's not a lot of variation that you will see in the visas that come out of Makeover Monday. Sometimes they're a little more broad and you can tell who has a little more personal connection to it versus other people. Um, and the visas will, will vary quite a bit based on that. Um, but some of the ones that I've seen pop up, um, so there's some special interest ones. There was, um, <coughs> there have been ones on uh, Friends and Seinfeld, uh, Beatles music. Um, there's a lot of music ones out there. So if you're a music lover, go to Tableau Public, seek some of those out. There have been some really great ones on economic disparity around the globe. Co of course, COVID-19, there's the COVID-19 hub. There's a lot in there. Uh, quite a few really fun sports ones, uh, sports visas, um, all types of entertainment, but even personal stories, um, including uh, Kevin Flairledge uh, when, he, uh, when he caught COVID uh, midsummer. Uh, he tracked all of his symptoms for quite a while and posted it in Tableau Public. And that was a really interesting uh, viz to watch over time. So there, there's a lot you can do with data once you understand the basic fundamentals of uh, data literacy and how to bring it into your daily uh, practice. Um, there's, and it's something that you never really stop learning. Um, as as data privacy comes around, you have to think about ethics in your data. Uh, you have to think about who you are presenting this to because that is important. You need some subjects, you really need to uh, be careful about who you're presenting it to because it might be a, a trigger for somebody or it might be a very sensitive topic. So you need to be cognizant of that and respectful to the subject matter at hand. Um, when COVID-19 business started popping up, um, I remember there was um, a, a pretty large, I want to say statement, but there was a, kind of a pushback when the data first started coming out because of how it was being presented and it wasn't really respectful to the people experiencing COVID and, and what was happening at the time. So it was, it's you know, top of mind and definitely a good example of when you present the data, be mindful of how you present it. You know, do good with your data. And, and it's, you need to make sure that you're not, you're not being insensitive when you present very sensitive data, basically. Um, and that is all that I have really on, um, data literacy. Um, the one other thing I wanted to throw in that I didn't have on a slide um, is a lot of us, when you learn to write papers uh, for your classes, or you might be, um, maybe you're a journalist and you're used to writing uh, news articles. There's the five W's they always talk about when you write uh, any type of article or research paper. Those apply to your viz. Ask yourself those questions, not only about the data you're working with, but your data viz. Um, you know, where is the data coming from? Where is that viz going to go? Um, you know, who is who is going to be the receiver of that data? Who's going to give you the data? Um, you know, where are you going to display your viz? Just all of those questions come into play, and when you really think about um, those five W's, as they call them, um, your viz will get better because you're more mindful about what you're doing uh, with the data and with the uh, end result visualization. Um, and there was another five W's I found too, um, and Andy Cotgrave talks about, about them as well, but it's um, ask why, ask why, 
ask why. It's basically asking why um, about the visualization you're making. You know, why, why do you need that in there? Why do you want this in here? Um, you know, why is this important? Why is this not important? So, ah, I'm not even giving good voice to it because it's, it was written so well. Is that, in a, does he have that in If Data Could Talk? Michael, do you know? I think so. Um, if not, it's probably somewhere on his blog, but yeah, we yeah. got a link to that there. Yeah, um, but it was, it's just a, a really good, a good read and something to think about um, as you're going through and, and um, creating your visualizations. Yeah, lots, lots of great stuff. Um, a lot of content to digest. Again, data literacy, um, you know, the foundations are critical for you to learn. Um, in the chat, we posted tons of resources. Um, so again, for those of you that aren't signed up for the Data Literacy for All, uh, that's that free e-learning program from Tableau, please do sign up. Um, it's free. Uh, knock it out in a weekend. Um, we've got some great resources here too. Um, obviously, COVID uh, is still a thing. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about COVID, looking at the dashboards, maybe investigating the data, doing your own thing, uh, Tableau uh, offers that up for you to investigate that data. Um, part of data literacy, again, asking questions, being curious, inquisitive, um, ex exploring the data, pulling out information, and communicating effectively. Um, this is a great uh, resource for you to do just that. Um, with the election, election data was one of the things that Michelle and I were talking about. That's also available out there for you to use uh, to, again, ask questions about, explore. There's a lot of great visualizations from the community on Tableau Public, even, uh, for you to understand, you know, based on the type of visualizations that you develop and you create, how you can tell a story with the same data much differently and get a very different perspective. Um, other uh, resources that we have out there, uh, Ben Jones, who actually was part of the Tableau public team, um, has spun off and created his own company called Data Literacy. He's got a lot of great free uh, resources, webinars, on-demand training. Um, if this is something you're interested in, um, that's out there. Again, the link's there, dataliteracy.com. Um, he does provide uh, also, uh, paid services, training, um, things like that, but a lot of great free resources for you just to understand um, really how to be more effective as an analyst, as a data communicator, as a developer. Um, these skills are so critical. Um, really quick, I'll just kind of touch on, you know, some of the things that Michelle said. As we're looking for talent, um, you know, to develop dashboards or data or analytics. Um, you know, part of, you know, our jobs and, and even your job to some degree is maybe you look for new opportunities is to make sure that you have that data literacy background. Um, the technical aspects we can teach, you know, those are fairly easy if, if you're someone that loves to just jump in and, you know, figure things out. The data literacy part of things, you know, being, uh, again, inquisitive, asking questions, understanding how to work with data, why things are happening. Those are the skills that um, employers, I think, today are really looking forward uh, more so. Again, technical, we can teach easily. Data literacy, that's something it doesn't matter what tool. Um, that, that's just, you need to have that today. So do check out dataliteracy.com, all these great resources, a lot of good stuff. Uh, additionally, uh, there's some more things out in the community uh, for free, storytelling with data. Um, this is a whole website community uh, that allows data to be put out there for you to uh, exercise some challenges, uh, do some things with, um, and have that community to kind of peer review, much like some of the things that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit with the Makeover Monday Workout Wednesday. 
uh, storytelling with data. Uh, that is kind of the brainchild of Cole uh, Nussbaumer and Affleck. So she's got this website along with her books. Um, those are also great resources. And while they're more about, I think, understanding data and communicating data, that's part of those traits. Uh, when we took that uh, little quiz, there's a bunch of traits that fall into what data literacy is. Um, this is going to help skill build and make you a better uh, developer, data communicator, analyst, all of the above. So do participate with this. Uh, check it out. Um, I'm sure you're going to find a lot of useful information out of this. Again, the data literacy for all. Um, we posted this in the chat, but uh, do uh, bookmark this, sign up, tableau.com slash learn slash data literacy. Uh, that'll get you all the information. You get signed up, go through those uh, trainings, um, and knock it out. Uh, this is a great way to connect with us. Again, for Phoenix, we've got our Slack channel, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, email. Um, you'll get a copy of all this and ways to connect. Uh, Des Moines, you're on Twitter and LinkedIn. You've got your Gmail account. We'll modify this and get that on there too. Um, we appreciate you all joining. Uh, do stay connected with us. Sign up at usergroups.tableau.com. As I mentioned before, the Phoenix Tableau User Group will meet once more uh, before the end of the year, December 10th. Uh, the event will come soon, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, before we end it, I did want to mention again some of those other activities, the Workout Wednesday, the Makeover Mondays. Those are all also other community activities going on in the uh, basically the global community of Tableau. If you're brand new or you're just learning about the product, uh, this is a great initiative to be part of. Uh, Makeover Monday really hones in on your creative skills for you to take data and a sample of a visualization that might already exist and transform that into something different. Uh, maybe you have a specific question about the data that you're able to identify. Um, and it's a really great exercise to see all the variations of something that comes really from the, the same data set. Uh, alternatively, the Workout Wednesday really focuses on your technical aptitude, and while it's not necessarily that data literacy um, component, the technology piece, we want you to make sure that, again, that you're really upskilled and that you're leveraging all the features and functionality that Tableau has to offer, and Workout Wednesday is one of those things that really stretches that, uh, you know, technical muscle of yours learn how these tips and tricks uh, you know, affect dashboards or figure out ways to solve things, um, you know, reverse engineer things that are you know, done. Um, but, but that's really the whole goal of these two uh, community activities. I posted the links in the chat, so you should have those as well. Um, Michelle, Kirk, anything else uh, you'd like to cover before we kind of wrap up for the day? Um, I just wanted to um, chime in on the Makeover Monday and Workout Wednesday. Um, I don't do them all the time, um, but when I do do them, um, Makeover Monday, usually I can get done the same day or maybe the next day. But Workout Wednesday, the very first time I did one, it took me five days to complete it because it just completely <laughs> stumped me for a while. Um, and I, I actually went out to the community and searched and searched and searched for pieces and parts of that one that I, the first one I did, because it was really, really hard. Um, so don't worry if it takes you a little bit longer than one day to do either one of those challenges, because they're, they're very different every week, and sometimes they'll be easy, and sometimes it may take longer. So don't worry, you know, don't think you have to get it done in one day, or you're just not going to do it. And don't think you have to do it every week either. Uh, if you don't have time, you don't have time to do it. But if you do have time, I'd encourage you to jump in and do those. And Makeover Monday, they also have a weekly kind of a review um, of, um, they, they just kind of go through and, and randomly pick, I don't know if they randomly pick them, but uh, they pick a few of the vizs and they go through the viz and say uh, what they liked, what they thought maybe could have been done a little differently 
Um, but it's a, it's a great way to take a more critical look of how you build your viz and how you think about building your data viz to communicate information to others. So it's a, it's a really, really good experience to have, even if they don't look at your viz. Um, it gives you a different mindset as far as being critical of the, the visualizations that you are making and, and helping you ask better questions or the right questions as you go to build your biz. Yeah, ab absolutely. So those, those are all great uh, activities and there's there's a bunch other, and we'll include those all in the slide deck. Um, so there's no shortage of getting your hands on information to become more literate in data literacy and uh, becoming a more, better data communicator, uh, better dashboard designer, um, and all these community activities, um, everything we're talking about um, for the most part uh, is at no cost to you. So no reason to get involved, get engaged, and uh, all that great stuff. All right. Any questions uh, from us? I know we're uh, we're kind of ending early, um, but it looks like uh, we don't have anything in the Q and A. Nothing in chat. Uh, we again, we appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. You know, again, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, competition right now in in the virtual world for uh, user groups, whether it be Tableau or another product. So thank you all for taking the time spend with us. Um, if we don't talk again soon, ha everyone have a safe, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, Des Moines will definitely see you again in 2021. Uh, so thanks to Kirk, Michelle, uh, Lee, Alyssa, everyone. Thank you. Have a great rest of the week.